Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everybody here today. Uh, happy spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think we've got a beautiful day ahead of us in that respect as well. I do have one announcement. Um, the second hymn after the sermon is number 388, as indicated on the board. Oh, Jesus, I have promised. So I think that's it. I don't think we have any other announcements, so we will get started. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Servants of God, the magic proclaim.
Remember that Christ can sympathize with us in our weaknesses, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us pray. Holy God, Lord of all life, Lord of all hearts, Spirit who dwells within, open now our hearts to confession before you, reveal your glory to us. Shine behind you through your name, upon your words of love, written on our hearts. You will invite us to live righteously with you, and we acknowledge the desire. Help us in the doing, for we are weak on our own. Hear us as we come in prayer to Jesus. Amen. In repentance and faith, receive the promise of grace and the assurance of pardon. Here are words we may trust, words that deserve full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. in the large print Bible. Let us pray. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend our spirits, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, on Psalm 119, 9 to 16, we will read alternating verses. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Bless me, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinance of your mouth. I delight in the way of your I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. The 
The Old Testament reading this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will not, I for I forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This ends this week. And we turn again to the uh, Gospel of John for our Gospel lesson this morning. And today we're reading in chapter 12, beginning with verse 20. Jesus and the disciples were in Jerusalem. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. We thank God for the reading of this word. Jesus was in the Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. You may remember that as John told the story of Jesus, this is the third and final time that Christ would celebrate Passover there. Because, as we hear in this text, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus made that announcement in response to a request that the disciples Philip and Andrew had brought to him about some Greeks who wanted to see him. It was a significant announcement. It signaled that something was about to change in Christ's life. On three other occasions recorded in John's Gospel, Jesus had specifically noted that the time had not come yet. 
My hour has not yet come, he told his mother, when his mother told him that the wine had run out at a wedding feast in Cana. This hour had not come had a bearing on the outcome of two other incidents as well, both of which would have ended Jesus' mission on this earth. So when Jesus made it known that the time had come, he might well imagine that a major shift in his life story was about to happen. The trigger for that shift was the news about those Greeks who wanted to see Jesus. They had come to Jerusalem with all the thousands of pilgrims who, who poured into the city to celebrate Passover. The Greeks represented the world going after Jesus, a comment made by the Pharisees the day before. The Pharisees had been alarmed by the reaction of the crowds who had lined the streets and shouted Hosanna as Jesus rode into the city on a donkey. It had happened. The world, the Greeks coming to see Jesus, shifted the end of his life into full gear. Within days, he would be dead, crucified. So right then, when Philip and Andrew brought him the message about the Greeks, he began to talk about it, his death. The hour has come, Jesus said, for the Son of Man to be glorified. That glorification is understood to be his death on the cross. Christ lifted up on the cross and subsequently into heaven after his resurrection. It was not an easy conversation for Jesus talking about his death now that the time had come. He was troubled in his soul, the text tells us, but resolute about staying the course. He would not ask God to remove the cup of death from him, as recorded in our other Gospels. No, he said. This was all part of his mission in coming to earth. He knew full well what lay ahead. He was willing to face the dark hour that was drawing near to him. It would not have been an easy conversation for his disciples to hear. There they were in the midst of the excitement of another Passover celebration in Jerusalem. They were caught up in the heady parade that had greeted them as they had followed Jesus into the city. There they were with strangers coming up to them who were interested in finding Jesus and talking to him. It would not have been an easy conversation for the Greeks to hear if indeed they were standing in the background listening. It held little encouragement for a prospective follower to warm up to. How was the concept that loving life meant losing it heard in the ears of those strangers? Why would anyone hate or reject their life in this world? I will draw all people to myself when I'm lifted up or crucified, Jesus said. There was a lot to consider for anyone interested in serving Jesus. Anyone thinking about becoming his disciple and following him right up to the foot of the cross. Instead of rejecting it, Jesus embraced the realization that his hour had come to be glorified, to be lifted up on a cross, and, and crucified in view of the whole world. We're still drawn to that event. The world is still watching as Easter draws near. As followers, we're making our way through this final week of Lent, reminded clearly of what lies ahead. And we're considering again the call of the one we follow. 
We're called to remember this life of love we live is given to Christ. Christ who teaches us to love one another as he has loved us. It's a life of selflessness dedicated to the good of others. A life that will be in conflict with the world that forces its own will for its own gain upon others. It's a life we've been sadly reminded again this past week that rejects the violence of hate projected towards any people. Consider the power Christ's death brings to this world. That for his followers, it is the power of life as his followers continue to find their lives in giving them away. We make those choices every single day. Dear friends, this is our time. May God be glorified as we seek to bring the selfless love of Christ into all that we think and do. Amen. And I invite Carrie. Yeah. Carrie is going to come and. No, no, now we're going to hum another hymn. I'm sorry, Carrie. Just got to read the program. We're going to hum number 388. Oh, Jesus, I have promised.
another message on one great hour of sharing. Good morning. Good morning. Because water is life. When Manuel Nazario casts his net into the water these days, his catch is far less than plentiful. In the remote area of Bolivia, near the Paraguay-Argentina border, Manuel and the members of his indigenous community are finding that their fishing traditional livelihood is now in severe jeopardy. The Caparindaida community is grappling with the devastating impact of the climate change. Irregular rainfall patterns, prolonged droughts, disease, and mining pollution. As a result, their age-old ways of life and their means of economic support are increasingly threatened. The degradation of the environment and the mounting lack of access to water threatens their very survival. Manuel has emerged as one of the leaders in his fishing community. A born innovator and community organizer, he is now leading the families in the Catherine toward the promise of a better way in partnership with a local organization called CERDEC, which stands for the Center for Regional Studies of Carija. Together they are working to develop irrigation systems and to collect and store rainwater for safe drinking. Because of gifts received through one great hour of sharing, like the gifts you and I will make to this offering here in our congregation, CERDA is building infrastructure to address the community's critical water source shortage. Their goal is to create 500 meters of pipes to transport safe well water to those in need. Manuel will be responsible for carrying out the excavation work on the underground piping system. Our gifts will also support the distribution of plastic containers to collect and save the rainwater. One great hour of sharing helps us address critical water needs in places like South Sudan, training technicians to dig water wells for their communities and on maintenance, hygiene, and sanitation. And in places like Detroit, our gifts have joined We the People of Detroit to secure access to water for those who have had their water shut off during the pandemic. Imagine not being able to wash anything during the pandemic. One great hour of sharing is the single largest way that Presbyterians come together every year to share God's love by becoming repairers of the breach, joining with people in need to build God's house together. Together, we are making a better world for those in need, no matter where they are. Our goal for One Great Hour Sharing is $850. Please give generously, for when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Let us pray. Meet all the needs for which the world thirsts, O oh God. May your spring of justice, compassion, and peace spring up quickly, and may it spring up quickly in us. Yeah. Amen. And we've come, uh, come to our prayers, our time of prayer together. Uh, if you have any, any joys or any concerns, this is a time to come together and, and share them with you. Yes, Al. I have a joyous morning of being here. Yes, we're happy to see you. But another joy of my great grandson Heath and his cancer is he's been he's doing great. But he said he's we feel he's cancer free at this point, but he's still undergoing He's doing oral chemo at home every day. Wow. He goes to the Roswell once a week yeah. for a treatment also for the next three months yet. Yeah. So I ask you to keep him in your prayers. I ask you to have thoughts and prayers for my daughter Julie. Uh, 
in her position and all the nurses that are working so hard. She's nurse manager in charge of infection control at OEN General and Blackfoot Regional. So they're in the middle of it and they're all working so hard. So, but that's, thank you. Your grandson's name again? Pardon? Your grandson's name again? Heath. Heath? Yeah. This is the good year, I think. <laughs> it's the one I always turn on. I don't know. You can't decide I'm going. <laughs> Karen? I just have a fun joy. on um, Because Kathleen turned 30 on Friday, so I am somehow the mother of a 30 year old. And I find that. <laughs> Fun and interesting, and you know, life is what it is. So, there it is. She's just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will ask you to keep uh, Sean's mom in your prayer. Uh, she's quite ill at this moment and in the hospital. So if you would remember that this week as you go through this week together. Anything else? Then let us, let us bow our hearts in prayer. Oh, you good and gracious God, you who love us more than we will ever know, Come now as we open our hearts to you. Expectant or not, may we simply be open to the love of your spirit within. And in that love, dear God, we lift our thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, O oh Lord, for the beautiful sound of, of children here in our midst again, coming home with my bed. Oh God, may they know they are always welcome here. Our Thanksgiving for, for the beautiful day of spring that we enjoyed last week and we're looking forward to more beautiful sound of our birds returning and sounding like they're happy to be back. And the joy of, of birthdays, oh God, of our children as they do turn 30 and 40 and whatever. Oh Lord, the wonder of parents as they continue to be the parents to their children forever. We thank you for the joy of vaccine becoming more and more available. And we pray for, for everyone to take advantage and to protect their lives and the lives of others. And oh Lord, in that love we also bring our concerns. Concern for a grandson in a battle of cancer. Pray that your healing hand continue to be upon Heath. Continue to lead him along that road of recovery. Concern for a daughter in charge of an entire department for God that, that seeks to keep this, our hospital safe. And for all the nurses and all the doctors and all the EMTs, everyone who is working so hard 
bring health to those who fall ill. Lord, we lift Sean's mom before you and pray that she is there in your healing and that you watch over and keep Sean and all his family during this time. And we ask that you comfort and ease the grief of those who are suffering in any way. Those touched by tragedy, those touched by losses in this life of ours that seem impossible to overcome. Bless and keep those who are ill and strengthen our hearts, dear God as together we give our lives to serving Christ. Here among us, ever in widening circles, growing in our love and our care for one another, and in our sense of the Spirit guiding us and leading us to follow who you want us to be, and doing, O oh Lord, what you would have us to do. Continue to stir our faith and lead us as we follow you and bless and keep this world also, this great wide world and all her peoples. Comfort her and deliver her and show us how to live in peace with one another. We pray this in Christ's name. He turned to his disciples and said, Pray like this. As we join our voices, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn uh, to another hymn, number 426, and we'll hum away through Lord Speak to Me that I may speak.
invite us to just open the floor and let us share a little time together uh, before you feel you want to be dispersed. If you have any anything to say to one another that you would air publicly. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to remind you that next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We've gotten there already. And you will be hearing more about our Easter Sunday plans as well. For sure, we are having a sunrise service at 710 uh, up in Chestnut Hill Cemetery. Um, so that that is a certainty. And we're working on the other certainty. Then, then let us. We're ready to go. <laughs> We're going to have a beautiful day today, so I, I, I think we need to, oh yes, yes, heart company. But before you do, receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. See you next week.